Hey everyone! Today I want to talk about four dinosaurs that look like Evolution greenlit the concept art instead of the final design. I'm talking runway ready weirdos, a tiny fashionista with shoulder streamers, a raptor that cosplays as a duck, a goth chicken with bat wings, and whatever this adorable cryptid thinks it's doing. Everyone loves a clunky prototype, especially the kind that looks like it's prepping for the Met Gala. But Mother Nature doesn't buy gear for aesthetics. Usually, there's a smart strategy behind the madness. Well, most of the time. Sometimes, that job is obvious. Bigger teeth, faster legs. But sometimes, the job is a bit weirder. Get noticed, chomp down on a really aggressive salad, or figure out a way to steal from the buffet without becoming someone else's snack. That's our game plan for today. Some of these guys are definitely a one-off, but which of these ideas actually stuck, and which ones were just a limited edition? It's the island of misfit dinos. So today, we're taking a look at the dinosaurs who broke the rules of design and discovering what happens when dinosaurs get weird. Don't forget to hit that like button and let's dive into this. Okay, so quick question. Why does this dinosaur have shoulder streamers like a Vegas showgirl? Hold your horses. I promise we'll get to the missing name drama in a bit. First, let's talk about the elephant sized chicken in the room. Look at this thing, it's huge. That's because I drew it too large. In real life, our friend here was roughly the size of a turkey. But for visual clarity, and let's be honest, dramatic flair, I'm taking the Jurassic Park approach to dinosaur scaling. But let's not get too distracted by its size, because trust me, there's a whole lot more weird on the menu. So what on earth is this thing? This is Ubi Ra Jira, the dinosaur that, depending on who you ask, doesn't technically exist. But before we get to its legal identity crisis, let's talk about those ribbons jutting out from its shoulders. Talk about ostentatious, this thing looks like it's ready to perform at halftime. So what were they? What do they do? And do they get good Wi-Fi reception? These bizarre filaments were first described in 2020, and thanks to the Crabtooth limestone formation it was discovered in, aka Brazil's gift to fossil nerds, we know a surprising amount about how they were structured. They were soft, feather-like quills. Just look at this beauty. The reason we're able to see them at all is because this area was once an unusually calm lake, with a bottom that was basically a dead zone for marine life. So then when our friend sank to the bottom, his remains weren't disturbed by any critters or moving currents. And that meant a faster and less intrusive fossilization process. Most rocks, if you're lucky, will give you at best a skeleton. But the Kratu limestone formation took it a step further and shows off the accessories. I mean, sure, they're totally useless in a fight unless you're trying to flag down your friend for some backup. And of course, as you can probably already tell, not built for flying. Which then leaves only one obvious explanation. Vanity. You see... Displays aren't just about peacocking, it's economics. If your streamers help you win mates faster or end a staring contest before it becomes a chasing contest, well then, they pay for themselves. And this makes a lot of sense. After all, only a healthy animal can afford silly accessories without becoming someone else's lunch. The louder the streamer, the louder the flex. Sure, it's risky, but in a world where attention seeking is currency, sometimes you have to be a little risky. We're talking sexual selection, rival intimidation, species identification, the prehistoric version of trying too hard to get noticed. Now, if you saw my last video, you already know the strategy. Look weird, get mates. And Ubirajar understood the assignment. It brought props. But wait a second, Napkin. Didn't you say earlier that this thing doesn't technically exist? It looks pretty real to me. And you're right. The fossil is real. It's just that legally, it's been erased. Remember that original paper from 2020 that described those weird streamers? Well, it's gone. Disappeared, like my grasp on taxonomy after three coffees and zero sleep. Okay, maybe not that dramatic. The truth is, the paper was retracted in 2020 over a controversy surrounding the fossil's exportation from Brazil. Turns out, international fossil law basically makes the IRS look chill. In the end, the fossils ended up back in Brazil, and just like that, Ubiraja lost its name. Yep, it turns out, you can't keep the name if the paper gets yanked. So the name Ubiraja was legally erased. Man, can you imagine doing everything right and then losing your name because of a filing error? However, there was an upside to this. The situation helped push for clearer standards around fossil exports and better international cooperation between museums and governments. It turns out, you can't just pack a 9-foot fossil into your luggage and call it a souvenir. So does the science still hold up? Absolutely. The anatomy, the context of those ridiculous streamers, all still real. We're just stuck here waiting on the sequel paper. And hopefully a name that doesn't sound like someone sneezed into their keyboard. And I don't know about you, but I for one can't wait for it to be published and then immediately locked behind a $60 paywall. But for now, what we do know is that this may be one of the earliest known non-avian dinosaurs from South America with feather-like display structures. 
which is a pretty big deal. It nudges back the timeline for decorative plumage in Guandana and supports my very professional theory that dinosaurs were deeply concerned about their looks. Why else would you evolve shoulder flags if not for drama? Personally, I'm just waiting for someone to find a T-Rex with a throat sack. And speaking of nightmarish looks, what happens when nature combines a parrot, a vampire, and a rat costume? You get this guy. Meet Pegomastax, the parrot-beaked dinosaur that looks like it's permanently on its way to a Halloween party. Talk about a prehistoric nightmare. Parrot beak? Check. Drawn oversized? Always. Vampire fangs? Check. Check. check a -rooney. Vegetarian diet? Check. Wait, what? Yep, you heard right. This little monster was a vegetarian, which raises a pretty big question. Where does something this weird even come from? Transylvania? Nice guess, but nope, this salad-loving cryptoid actually came from South Africa, specifically the Upper Elliot Formation. Pegomastax lived in the early Jurassic and its fossils were discovered in the 1960s. And then they were shoved in a drawer for 40 years. Which, let's be honest, in fossil years, that's basically express delivery. Pegomastax was part of a small group of plant-eating dinosaurs known for one thing, weird teeth. Sharp beak up front, rows of grindy teeth in the back, and just to keep things interesting, fang-like canines. You know, just in case you need to bring a knife to a salad bar. So what were these fangs for? They're too small for any serious meat shredding, and everything about the jaws says plant eater. So, best guess, probably a little bit of a Napoleon complex. Sharp bitey teeth tend to say, nope, stay back you. Or, I don't know, maybe they're just eating really tough plants or something. Evolution must have looked at those leafy greens and thought, we better give them some weapons. Now, Pegomastax hasn't been found with any furs or fuzz, but its cousin, Tian Yulong, was covered in little filaments. So Pegomastax might have had some fluff too. Emphasis on the mite. But let's get to the important stuff. It's not about the outfit, it's about the bite. Most plant-eating dinosaurs just chomp up and down. Simple, but Pegomastax could slide its lower jaw front to back while chewing. This gave it more control on tough plants and made food easier to digest. So the fangs were real, but the threat was not. Prehistoric misdirection at its finest. Because when you're the size of a cat, lunch isn't just about eating, it's about winning. Pegomastax lived in a dry floodplain with scrappy scattered plants, not exactly a buffet. With a mouth built for nipping and slicing, and a pair of scary fangs for flair, Evolution handed this cat-sized dinosaur the dental plan of a bob boss. That's really what makes this little guy so interesting. Looks can be deceiving. Fangs don't always mean carnivore. Sometimes the secret weapon is what you don't see. Small dino, big mystery. In short, the fangs may have got your attention, but it was its unique jaws that paid the bills. And speaking of animals that shouldn't work, what happens when a raptor stares at a duck and goes, yep, that's me now. Next up, Hoshka Raptor, the raptor cousin, that's just plain silly. I mean, seriously, come on, buddy. You had one job to do. You're built like a predator, you've got raptor right in the name, and you still went with a duck costume? What was evolution thinking? This is Hoshka Raptor, a small raptor relative from the Gobi Desert. And you're probably wondering, what's going on with that face? Well, that strange duck-like snout was hiding some secrets. When scientists scanned the fossil, they found a flat, paddle-like shaped snout loaded with tiny nerve canals. Sort of like the pressure sensors crocs and ducks use to feel movement in the water. Basically, Evolution duct taped a fish detector to a murder lizard. And that wasn't the only weird feature. This wasn't just a smooth birdie beak. Inside the snout was a full set of tiny packed teeth, crammed near the front and turning the mouth into a perfect fish trap. So yeah, Evolution basically borrowed the sensory toolkit from ducks and slapped it onto the meat slicing snout of a raptor. Which is sort of like giving a shark a pair of chopsticks. Unnecessary, but weirdly effective. But of course, we can't stop there. What are we, tame? Add in a swan-like neck, a compact little body, and arms that some people say might have moved like paddles. And suddenly, you've got a dinosaur that looks like it's halfway through swimming lessons. Probably not full scuba mode or waddling like a penguin, but it was probably really comfortable swimming or wading through water. So wait a second, does this mean that this little guy wasn't just pretending to be a duck? He might have actually lived like one too? Well, maybe, but it's not that simple. Back in 2017, a team led by Italian paleontologist Andrew Cow looked at the swan-like neck, the built-in fish radar, and those oddly shaped limbs, and concluded, yep, this dinosaur probably liked to hang out in ponds. Basically, they saw that weird duck stuff and said, we're team duck. However, not everyone bought the whole pond predator pitch. Plenty of land animals have features that look aquatic until you zoom out. Just ask Parasolophysis, the dinosaur with a giant head crest that early scientists thought was a snorkel. But nope, it turns out, it was basically a giant dinosaur kazoo. Great for honking, but terrible for scuba. And since we only have one specimen for Halshka Raptor, scientists say we should tread carefully before declaring it the world's weirdest duck impersonator. So at this current moment, paleontologists are asking for the receipts. All right, so what's the final verdict on Halshka Raptor? It's still weird. In fact, later studies took a closer look and said, yeah, some of those features, they do look pretty water adapted. But overall, it's probably a mix. 
part land predator, part water bird, part let's just see what happens. But if you thought the body plan was wild, just wait until you hear how we found this little oddball. Believe it or not, this fossil didn't start off in a museum. It started on the black market and got passed around through private collections until eventually one of the collectors went, hold on, this might actually be science. Now, scientists are used to private collectors showing up with glued together Etsy nightmares. So just to be sure, they ran it through a synchrotron CT scanner. Basically, it's a super powered x-ray that went to grad school. Seriously, these things are awesome. And to everyone's surprise, the whole process was very expensive. Oh, and also, it's real. You did it, buddy. Congratulations, you're a real dinosaur. So yeah, evolution slapped fish gear onto a raptor-shaped frame, and somehow, it kind of worked. But hey, at least it didn't try to fly or anything, because our next dino, oh, it tried. It's basically what happens when Mother Nature's approach to flight was, eh, we'll wing it. Let me introduce you to Yi Chi, a dinosaur with bat wings, feathers, and a dream. Okay, I'm not gonna lie to you all. This thing's pretty awesome. It's tiny, it's got fuzzies, and then boom, bat style wings. Well, kind of. It sort of looks like a parrot tried to cosplay as a bat and then panicked halfway through and said, eh, close enough. Anyways, this little weirdo is called Yi Chi, a small dinosaur discovered in northeastern China that belonged to a small group of tree hugging theropods called Scansoriopterygids. Let's just pretend I said that correctly. But what makes Yi Chi so special? Well, aside from its whole sparrow dressed like a flying squirrel vibe, this thing took weird to a whole new level. So let's finally talk about those strange wings. When paleontologists found the fossils, they noticed long rod-like bones sticking out from the wrist. Now in the past, we probably would have imagined something like this, but thankfully this time, scientists compared the bones to modern day flying animals like bats and realized, hey, these rods probably supported thin flaps of skin stretched between the arm and the body. This thing's basically a bat dino. Yeah, yeah, that's great napkin, but we all just wanna know if it could fly or not. Well, normally this wing type combination isn't found in dinosaurs, we see it in flying reptiles and some mammals, but dinosaurs, they don't typically have wings that allow them to fly. But Yi Chi is no exception. Still, there are some paleontologists that suspect that Yi Chi might have been able to glide across short distances, not so much soaring in the sky, but more like awkwardly leaping from tree to tree. Again, think flying squirrel with ambitions. But here's where it gets even weirder. It turns out Yi Chi wasn't alone. A few years later, paleontologists discover in Boteriz, another, there's that word again, Scansoriopterygids with the same odd combination. Rod-like wrist bone, skin membrane, feathery body. Suddenly, this wasn't just a one-off mutation. It was a whole new branch of dinosaurs beta testing a different type of flight from their feathered wing cousins. That's the real story here. These guys weren't evolutionary mistakes. They were prototypes. On one side, feathered dinosaurs were fine-tuning the bird blueprint, and on the other, a group that was experimenting with fleshy skin. Time to place your bets. Now, you might have noticed, while some mammals pull off the membrane style wing, such as bats and sugar gliders, you don't really see them showing up in the lineage that led to birds. Which then begs the question, why don't we? Why didn't Yi Chi's design win out? Well, there are a few reasons. Yi Chi was tiny, with a short wingspan and not a whole lot of flapping power. Its gliding skills were so-so at best, and by the time it got going, other feathered flyers such as Archaeotrix were already miles ahead, literally. Basically, these guys showed up to a drone show with paper kites. But that's exactly what makes Yi Chi so interesting. Evolution isn't just a story about winners and losers. It's the world's most chaotic pitch meeting. Some ideas soar and others crash. And Yi Chi did a little of both. Not bad for a prehistoric weirdo. So yes, evolution ships a lot of concept art. A streamer here, a solid thing there. We love to see it. But let's be honest, when it comes to sky supremacy, dinosaurs probably should have left that to the professionals. I'm talking about a creature with a wingspan the size of an airplane built to dominate the prehistoric skies. But unfortunately, we're out of time. So I guess we'll have to leave the story of these giant flying nightmares for another video. Until then, I would like to thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more, please consider subscribing to my channel. And don't forget to bring snacks.